here at St Hennessy's Cathedral. Sorry about the echo. Um, the building was finished in 1285 and we're still doing the snagging. <laughs> a couple of uh, health and safety uh, features just remember that most of the exits um, are behind you, they're marked um, in green. And it is a very old building, the floors are not always um, absolutely flat. So um, then watch, watch, your foot, watch your footing. It's great to be able to welcome this event here to St. Hannity's. We feel very privileged to have you all here, to have such a distinguished group of speakers come, come to talk to us. You are most welcome. Thank you for coming. And thank you for coming tonight to this very special event. My name is Alan Perwin. I'm the Learning and Public Engagement Curator at the Butler Gallery, which is just across the river from us here at this beautiful cathedral. And I'd like to thank Dr. Mark Rudy for inviting us tonight into this very special place. And the event that you're about to see, it's um, all part of Traveller Pride Week, which has been running all week across the nation. And I think all the institutions that are part of it here tonight, including ourselves, Butler Gallery, St. Hannes' Cathedral. Um, it wouldn't be possible without the Kenny Leader Partnership, who have really pulled it all together, and, and we thank them for doing that. I'd like to thank you all for coming to join us both in person here tonight at the Cathedral, and for those of you looking online, because of course we're, we're live streaming the event tonight. And the actual event that we're having, it's a particular talk, and in conversation, with a, with a very distinguished panel that you see behind me, um, about what is culture. And that's a tricky question, because culture means a lot of things to many people. And in Ireland, it's kind of whose culture are you talking about, or whose culture are we representing? And that's something that we really want to kind of explore in, in our conversation tonight. Before we jump into that conversation, there will be some other cultural activities, and we have some music that will, and dance for you to see, which is fantastic. And thank the performers who are here tonight to play for us. But to introduce the panel who you see behind me, on my left-hand side is Helena Powell from the Kilkenny Traveller Movement. And Helena has been doing Trojan work in Kilkenny City um, around issues of youth empowerment with the Traveller Movement and just generally raising awareness. We're delighted at the Butler Gallery that she brought a fantastic oral history <coughs> project from two, uh, 2012 or so at the Gallery. So we were really happy to link up with Helena on that. To the left of Helena, you have Mary McDonough from the Exchange Network Ireland, a really important national, um, I suppose, organization for travelers. It works across education, it works across employment, it helps every aspect of the traveler community um, in terms of empowerment and finding a voice in, in the country. And, and I just say to say Mary um, also works in an aesthetic way, she works with the arts, and she may say a little bit about that herself. Um, directly behind you then, we have the fantastic Rosalind McDonough. And Rosalind may be in a lot of your consciousness recently because she had um, an absolutely critically and publicly award-winning play at the Abbey Theatre just finished a few weeks ago, um, Walls and Windows. And it, you know, it really was a dramatic and, and a powerful piece of work. Um, Rosalind has written for the Irish Times. She writes a lot about um, women's rights for the traveller movement. So it's something, again, she will bring up. And then, holding it all together, I probably don't really need to, need to say too much about this gentleman, um, Mr. Vincent Brown, um, a journalist in print and broadcast with the Irish Times and the Sunday Business Post. And he'll be posing the questions to our three panelists. And um, it'll be quite an inspiring conversation, I feel. So, so thank you for coming. And I believe at this stage I'm going to hand over um, to more of a cultural element before we begin.
Play again. You have to play again. Play again. Play again. Yeah. So, oh, oh, I thought I thought it was going to be si singing beforehand. <laughs> Very sorry. Well, we've got three people here who do all the singing uh, for the next one. We got asked. The subject of the discussion is culture. I've tried to suggest that we should try to limit it, but that's it. What do you understand by culture, Rosie? I understand many things about culture, but what I would say is, in my experience, culture is also about content. I'm a traveler. When I'm around other travelers, I talk and behave, and I have rituals that I inherited from my ancestors. That's uh, when I move out of my family and I'm in a settled environment. Culture is not so much what happens on the surface, it's what happens underneath. So I would say I don't think about culture, I live it. Is that true of us all? And, um, The other thing is, Vincent, I only realize I'm a traveler when certain people remind me. So, in, in my everyday world, I don't think any of us go around saying, I'm Irish, this is my culture, I'm a I'm traveler. I'm Chinese. It's only when we're marked or targeted or when we have to justify who we are and what we are. And we've seen that in our history in Northern Ireland, where, where I remember, I'm old enough to remember Catholics had to define what their culture was outside of religion. But by and large, I would say most of us don't think about culture. We live it. Okay. Mary, what do you think of this first? For me, um, being Irish and being an Irish traveler, um, that deep sense of pride within me, with, um, first of all, being an Irish person, that culture with the Irish culture itself, I love and I adore and I breed and sleep and I eat it every day, do you know? Um, but the best of all, I get to be an Irish traveler within, within that uh, society. Um, that deep sense of beauty and diverseness that we have within our um, community, um, playwrights as, as we have here with uh, Rosalind McDonough, musicians, um, dancers, as you've seen with the beautiful little girl that was there a few minutes ago. Um, we have like um, generations of people that have instilled so much pride and um, generosity of their own uniqueness within um, their talents and given it to the wider general society and that understanding of people and that uniqueness that we have as individuals. Um, I believe that everybody has their own cultural ways of seeing and being and um, being part of, you know. Elena, what do you think? Um, I suppose culture, like Alan said, is, is so many, a different meaning, I suppose, to nearly every person. Um, and, and like um, Margaret and Rosaline, I, I, or Mary, sorry, <laughs> Um, I think that there's a lot of similarities between Irish culture and, and then the traveller culture as well. Um, but I think even travellers themselves 
have a different opinion and a view on what culture means to them and the diversity within the community itself as well. Um, and I think that that's an important fact to remember that what necessarily might be culture and what might mean culture to one traveller um, might necessarily mean it to another. Um, so is uh, talking about Irish culture as a whole. What is it about Irish culture that stig stigmatizes travellers? Because that's part of the I of Irish culture. Can I respond? What? Um, there's been a, a, for a long time through history, Irish culture, whatever that is, denied or dismissed the possibility of traveler culture. And I think all through our history, the obvious bits of our culture, our language, our music, our nomadism, uh, all those things, nobody ever invested in who we are. On the one level, you have health, education, employment, accommodation, but also in our language, in our history, in our, in, in our arts. Yeah, but you're not, I think. I but there was no investment, Vincent, and that in itself is a form of racism. They put yeah, money. Yeah, but I'm asking you, what is it about Irish culture that stigmatizes travelers racism. and traveler culture? Racism. What, yeah, what is it? How did it arise? Like, why, 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 why are the mass of Irish people like that? I don't know why they're like that. But I know they, I know they have inherited it. And I know uh, uh, it seems to be part of being Irish is the hate, diversity. Maybe do you want to say it? Yeah, in a way, it's um, others, I believe, that it's others' preconceived ideas of who um, maybe we are or who our community is, do you know? And then that builds upon the stereotypical views of others and then that allows others to um, have their own informed opinion on who we are as people. Um, as Irish people itself, um, we all have our own prejudices and our own um, discriminations. Um, you can see that throughout the world when you see no dogs, no Irish, no Joe Blacks, you know, so within our own um, in a, within our own society, within Ireland, that um, allowance from the the top, as they say, to discriminate and to have them preconceived ideas about us and not to have um, any law. Well, there is a law in place. It's just not, uh, you know, uh, used to help us really. You know, and when you look at other people and, like, I mean, like the wider general um, society. When you look at the impoverished, you know, the accommodation, as, as uh, Rosaline said, like, you know, there's, there's Irish people, whether you're travellers or not, living on the streets. There's people out there that's been discriminated against every day, employment. What is it about Irish culture that does that? Uh, for instance, in America, America is a deeply racist society, yet there is a, a, another part of American culture that is appalled by racism and appalled by the way blacks were treated for so long. But in our society, there is an acceptance of stigmatization of travelers. It is the one prejudice that is, that is acceptable and, and almost rejoicing. Uh, travelers, bloody knackers and other epithets um, or uh, characterizations. Um, and why is it so virulent, Helena? Well, as a traveller, I can't answer for the wider community. I am only on the other end of that um, victimised. You know, I don't want to be a victim I, of it, but 
I, I have experienced it mm -hmm. and I have flourished from it as well because I've defied every, every barrier that's been put in front of me and told me what I could not do and what I could not be. Do you know, so I, I rose from that and, and but maybe as a, as a settled person, uh, Vincent, that you could maybe answer. I, I'm, not, um, I'm here to ask questions. Not to <laughs> sorry, answer. but you know, when you turn the question back, <laughs> you know, I, I have a daughter that is, her father's not a traveler, so um, he's a settled man and she has experienced it both from the traveler community and the settler community. So I don't have an answer for it, all I can ask is of people to maybe come and get to know us instead of allowing your judgment to be from what other people have told you about us and um, maybe come and be and part of who we are. Reason. I think sometimes um, two things I suppose. The first thing is, is something Mary touched on about when it's from the top down um, and I think that not enough I suppose people in positions of power and, and the government and stuff haven't spoken out enough um, in favour of travellers only recently in the last couple of years and um, so I think that that has a big part got to do with it but I also think that it's the fear of the unknown um, and I think that if people don't know about a particular people or culture and, and they're just hearing the, I suppose, the stereotypical views of people, well, I think that's kind of what they're taking from it. And unfortunately, that, that's, that's just the way it is in Irish society. Um, and I think unless we all, I suppose, and that includes travellers themselves, um, start to speak up for themselves and, I suppose, in conjunction with, with public figures and stuff, I think that that's the only way that it's going to change. And um, if we're both willing to learn about each other's cultures and uh, each other's way of life. I find it very difficult <laughs> to, to, to hear because the echo is almost drowning out what you're saying. Can I add, add to Helena? And you were asking about what is it about Irish culture? And I suppose, on a broader level, at the moment, we're still dealing with the debris of our past, the mother and baby homes. It's only recently we embraced gay people. We still have direct provision. We take a very low numbers of people from Afghanistan. And I really do believe, and I know I'm in a church, but I think Ireland has always been a male patriarchal culture. It's not everything. Yeah, I know, Vincent, but this is where I live. This is where my history is. And you ask, what is it about the Irish? And I'm saying, they've done it, or we've done it, to lots of people. We've done it to children. Yeah. Uh, one, one feature about, about that, fe that aspect of our culture is maybe it could be addressed by people talking to one another. And I often be in company of people who go on about travellers. And I've asked, did you ever meet a traveller? Ever had a drink with travellers? Ever had a cup of coffee with travellers? And they don't. And, and that's a huge problem, that, I, that people don't meet travellers. I don't know if travellers are themselves much open to uh, well, there you go. You're blaming us again. Are we open? <laughs> like, Vincent, you know. I don't think it's blame. I do, if, I I do. Was, if I was part of a c culture that was demeaned by the mass of people, I think I'd be reserved about talking to the people who demean me. We don't live in a vacuum. We, we, we share our towns, our cities, our churches, our shops. And don't try and run at me 
travelers haven't extended the, the hand of friendship. You would lose. Well, there is. To, like, you know, if you look at gen uh, I the Irish society in general, um, it was always the welcoming Irish. Sorry, yeah, <laughs> we, um, the, the welcoming Irish, that, you know, that hand out, that door open at all times, you know. Um, it's the very same within our community. Um, we have that door open for people if they wanted to come in, but that door started to close in many, in many families for um, non-travellers because of that fear of the way they see them and the way they've been treated within, you know, you could be, as Rosing said, they're going to the shops or going to places and, you know, not being allowed or not being accepted. Um, I believe that if, as you said, Vincent, that it's that unknown that if you go and maybe sit with some members of our community and have that cup of tea and have that chat and having a bit, little bit a better knowledge and understanding of who we are as people, it may open up the, um, their minds to actually seeing that you can't, you know, stigmatize us for maybe a small cohort of our society or our community being, you know, what they don't like, you know, and they can't put it upon all of us because if you look at every community, there's, there's wrongdoings. Maybe somebody in the audience would maybe like to address the issue of um, the stigmatization of travellers as part of Irish culture and it's more virulent part than similar phenomena in other societies. Um, all right. Um, uh, what, are, what are the features of traveller culture that you think, uh, for instance, a, a problematic feature of settled Irish culture, what do you think is problematic in the Irish traveller culture, Helena? I suppose it's a hard question to answer. Um, I think it depends on, again, on the, the, what's important to some Irish travellers and what some Irish traveller culture is. So I suppose the likes of... Um, Just talk a little slower. Okay. Uh, in other words, let, let your echo uh, finish before you <laughs> have to go on, yeah. Uh, yeah, no problem. I'll try. Um, yeah, so I think it depends on what you consider like Irish traveller culture, what the, the problematic parts of it is, because while I suppose, for instance, bare knuckle boxing might be important to some members of the travelling community, and that might be a part of what they consider their culture, um, it's not for the majority of the community. So it's like, I suppose, what Mary is saying about small um, cohort, cohorts of the community giving the rest of the community a bad name. I think it just depends on, on what part of culture you're talking. Not, not every Irish traveller um, gets involved, I suppose, in, in bare knuckle box, and not every Irish traveller keeps a horse. It, it depends on what parts of, of culture um, you're talking about, I suppose. Like if you look at our community, there's many who live in houses, who grew up in houses, was born and brought to a house from day one. And then there's many of us who was born in a tent, um, uh, which I was, you know, and um, being able to have their wagons and their trailers and their, you know, uh, as um, Helena said there about some having horses. Now my mother's, my mother's family would, but my immediate family don't, do you know? So w I had different cultural values than what some of my aunts and uncles would have. I have a love of our language. Um, there's some of my family that can't speak a word of our language. Sorry? What language are you referring to? Um, the cant or the gammon right. and what academics would call shelter. So um, I have a love of our language, but I have like, there's some members of our community that can't speak it anymore. It's a dying, it's a dying language and we're trying to revive that. And there's many members of our community who's been successful in, in um, collating our, our language and putting it together. And sadly, a member of our community who it was a treasure died recently, Michael McDonough, 
who would have, um, you know, collected our words and, you know, wrote many, many um, different stuff for many different government members in regards to what our language means to us, but yet it's still not heard. Do you know, it's still not you appreciated. Do you speak Chant? Sorry, yeah, I would speak Sanskrit. Say what you said, you Chant. Now, yeah, Vincent, if you would, if it'd be <laughs> like speaking a foreign language to yourself, but stall the wit and soup, like you oh, can't right. push in front of the Nages. The Nages is going to Corpus and all you, you know? Um, but, like, in all honesty, our language was then stolen in, in part because if you go down the country, you have the words like Fien and Bure and Lacking and used so commonly. Sorry, what, which words? Fien, Bure, Lacking. It's used so commonly. And it's like as if it's theirs, it's ours. Do you know, it's our language. And we, we, we through generations, it was word of mouth that it's only in the last 10, 15 maybe years that, or maybe even 20 years that people's uh, travelers started to actually write it. Where we had people come in from um, the outside and um, from the wider community and try to study our language and then go off and talk about it, write about it, study it, research it. And some, from, some people were told many lies. For example, I could give you a word and tell you what it means, but it could mean something completely different. So there's words, there's books out there <laughs> okay. with so words that don't really make sense. Like, you my know? question was, what is it about the travel culture that you think is problematic? Or is there anything? No, before I answer, Those problematic issues are also in the settled community as well. I would say the role of women, I would say grappling with diversity, whether that be disability, death, our gay travelers, we're all struggling, single parents, particularly women, issues around feuding, you know, different families. And in order to work within the community, and in our very, we do it more than I do, that means resources, it needs government policies and commitments, and it needs implementation of various strategies. Now, I know you're bored. I, I can see it in your eyes, Vincent, but the truth is, the Irish is in terms of problematic concerns. We've been deprived of access to all sorts of things. So we really only involvement. And I think at the moment with young travelers, you know, from 16 to 35, there's some very, very interesting developments around identity, around the culture, around what it means to be a traveler. And I, I really, I'm delighted that it's evolving. I what? have one thing to say, like I just wanted to ask, is it, a, is, is it just views on it, is it like what's problematic for us or what's problematic for the wider society about us? And so there's two ways of looking at it. For me, what's problematic is society telling our people that they're no good and that they shouldn't be who they are. So then what's happening within our own community is they're believing it and they're becoming, they're losing their own identity to become, uh, well, to conform to the norm of the general society, the wider community, because, so they can fit in more, so they can be accepted, so they can go to school, so they can go and have a job, so they can like, you know, go to nightclubs and go and have a meal. And, you know, it's problematic for us that we are losing our self 
ourselves and our identity in order for to fit into a society that doesn't even like themselves sometimes. So, yeah. Community that's very striking is the incidence of suicide, which is so far so much higher than the incidence of suicide in the population as a whole. Uh, and you know, what, why do you think that is true? Um, I think one of the, the, the main problems with our suicide rate is the years of discrimination and, and the years of, I suppose, being told that we were no good and, and being told that we didn't conform to the norm um, of society. And like, just to give people a, an idea, the statistics, um, it's six to seven times higher for a, a, an Irish traveller to commit suicide than it is for their settled counterpart. Um, and that was done in a 2010 All-Ireland Traveller Health Study, which is nearly over a decade ago. And I can tell you as a traveller that suicide rates have got extremely worse since that. Um, so I think if something was, if a study was done now, that would even be higher than that. But I think it's lots of reasons. I think it's discrimination. I think it's the lack of access to services. Um, and I think sometimes that there's a piece of work needs to be done there with services, I suppose. To make them more culturally to make them, Yeah, exactly. To make them more culturally appropriate, to make them more welcoming. Um, and I suppose it's like anything. Uh, if you're not welcome, if you don't feel that you're wanted somewhere, you're not going to go back there. Um, and I think one of the, the major things that we need to try and work on with the community themselves is not just to attend a service when you're in crisis. Um, I suppose the most important part is the aftercare. Um, and a lot of the times, and I'm working in the area of mental health, and I think a lot of the times that that's one of, one of the, 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 the key problems is that people attend a service when they're in crisis, but they don't do the aftercare. Travellers have been treated very badly by Irish society for a long time. And, but I don't think the rate of suicide was as high 20, 30 years ago as it is today. So what has changed to make the suicide I'm not sure. I'm not sure I agree with you. I'm not sure I agree with you. I think suicide in Ireland, I'm old enough and you're old enough. We didn't talk about it. I think we in our community, we live in the world of social media, technology, families, are more isolated, all that set up. But I do think our community has been neglected and has always been neglected. Our men and boys have not been respected or protected. All that internalized shame and frustration, despair, and in the dark of isolation. That's a response, and it's systematic to what's been done to the community at large. And also, if you look at the Maoris in New Zealand, the native people of America and Canada, and the Aboriginal people, they have si similar stats around suicide. So I do think it's about neglect, impoverishment, and despair. But I think it's always been there. I don't think it's yeah, you a think new phenomenon. Suicide was a, was a silent feature yes. of both society in general and of the travel yeah, society. Yes. All right. Then we, we, uh, True generations before us, they would have had a sense of purpose. They would have had a trade. They would have had been able to go out there, work with their hands, and been able to bring in put, put money and put bread on the table. 
they would have been out like we had men that would have, and women that would have made and mended stuff and had a, like you know their own daily jobs every single day and then as time went on factories came in it was, it was less needed and wanted of a trades people and ha handmade stuff and menders and because it was easier to buy a plastic bucket than it was to get um, a tin or whatever and the older generation then lost their sense of purpose in a way because they, they kind of got not only uh, assimilated and as pushed to the edge of society, but their, their jobs was taken away from them. Then they were told to go on what people would like, social welfare. So that trade then never got passed down through, their, through the generation after that. And they weren't taught how to be um, within, within um, the trades of our, our, our ancestors before us. And then when they weren't taught by their own fathers and uncles and grandfathers and stuff like that, and then society as well was saying, we have nothing for you. They ended up carrying that then to the generation we have now. And then social media happened. And it, on the touch of a button, somebody can keep, you could have a hundred people saying, take your life, take your own life, you're not wanted, you know. And that's within general society, not only within the traveller community. So I think now it's so, more, so, e so much easier. Back then, in 20, 30, 40 years ago, we lived in camps. We li and when you had a problem, you were able to move away. Now you're told to stay where you are. And that then itself brings more and hurt and pain and anguish. And you can't move. You yourself then, as a person, it could be within the wider community, not only within ours, lose a sense of who they are and they believe what the wider general population is saying to them. And they believe, like, and like just even little girls and boys these days getting bullied within school, it's the touch of a button. And that's how easy it is to try to destroy somebody's self being and, and, uh, and you know, their understanding of who they are. And when you hear it enough, and you hear it that often, so you start to believe it. Well, another feature of the traveller community is not to do with longevity. And uh, travellers typically live far shorter lives than the community at large. Uh, why do you think that is, Aline? Again, I think there's a number of reasons. I think that Sometimes, I suppose, and it's, it's in society in general, it's not only with travellers, um, there's a fear of going to doctors and stuff like that. And um, a lot of the time even, and I see it when you're working kind of, people are going to appointments and they're coming back out from them and they're asking you, well, I don't really know what they're after telling me in the appointment. So um, a lot of the time, again, it's that thing of welcoming, it's that thing of feeling spoken down to. Um, and using a language that's not generally used within our community. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think for anybody, I suppose, going into somewhere and listening to these big words being thrown at them, it's going to automatically put them, I suppose, on guard. Could I just say that, that recently we had the report from the children's ombudsman about accommodation on children in Cork. I'm sure Elena would say more about Kakani, but those children were living with rats. This is this. Is, 2021, and when you when you start off living your life with rats all around you, how are you going to live long? Like you know, it starts with infancy. Also, I think that Mary mentioned it earlier. Access to services. I remember a time when doctors and GPs didn't want traveling families in their surgeries. Do you remember that? 
You never know what it is. But I remember, I remember they used to spray air pressure. I also think poverty, and we're not allowed to talk about that. You know, people assume that they are rich. There's a small few, but most travelers are living under the poverty line. The rates of un unemployment, 98%. And Vincent, people, you know, poor people don't live that long. COVID highlighted who are the first to get sick and die. It was the uh, poor and the vulnerable. It wasn't people in suits with good jobs. You know, I, I think it's, again, the, the children's ombudsman report wasn't just talking about children in a certain site, in a certain part of the country. He was talking about it all. And that's why we die so young. I know, I know. <laughs> I know they said it was rubbish. The Ombudsman put that report out there. It was done, it was studied, it was researched. There was proven evidence. And the council said, no, we don't believe that. Poverty. Poor health and death and racism is, is the thing that puts the nail on the coffin. Um, the primary healthcare projects that were set up around Ireland really have an important part to play as well um, because it's travellers themselves, mostly women, um, going out within their community and I suppose promoting positive health messages and stuff like that as well. So I think that that's, I suppose, part of, of, of probably of the reasons for such poor health statistics is a lack of education around certain stuff as well and a lack of understanding. So I think that the primary healthcare projects have a really important part to play um, in, in getting the messages out to the community itself as well. As a former primary healthcare coordinator, um, the hours that's given to the primary healthcare workers are minimalistic, to say the best. You could have like three staff members that is covering a vast area and you are only given 10 hours to 12 hours a week. You're not given any more than that. So if you're sitting with a person that has complex issues, you could be spending anywhere up to an hour, maybe an hour and a half, that person a day, just to speak to them. But yet you have maybe about 100 families within the area. How are you going to get that in within 12 hours? Do you know, so if it was invest, we need investment also within that area of primary health care projects to be able to fund that, you know, so they can go out and they can be more accessible to, to travellers within the community. There was a report published in uh, 2002, nearly 20 years ago now, called Inequalities in Mortality. And it showed that people in the lower income brackets died uh, on average five years young, uh, earlier than people in the, uh, in the higher income brackets. And it showed that 5,000 people die a year um, from inequality in our society. And people are alarmed by the number of people who die on the roads, which is about 350 a year, or people who die, as we far as we know, by suicide. We've talked a bit about that, which is maybe 400 a year. But here people, there's 5,000 die because of inequality. And I suppose it's no surprise that nobody paid any attention to the report. The report was done by the Institute of Public Health, which was set up under the Good Friday Agreement, and it deals with north and south of Ireland. And I suppose the reasons for travel longevity is, as you were saying, Rosalind, is poverty. One of the, one of the features is poverty, but that we, we pay no attention to that either at all. Another feature 
about the topic maybe that's much relied, much remarked upon, is the treatment of women in the travel community. And there's another report also published in the year 2002 called the Savia Report. It was sexual abuse and violence in Ireland. And it showed that, uh, that um, 200,000 women in our society had been raped in their lifetimes. Like it is an absolutely shocking figure, which again, no attention paid, for, uh, paid to it at all, even though it is funded by the Department of Justice and by the Department of Health, Michal Martin was uh, Minister for Health at the time. And here again is another shocking report that nothing, paid, people paid no attention. And it wasn't, these people, uh, these 200,000 people weren't all travellers. Um, obviously, um, anyway. Uh, I don't know, that might change the topic. Like if you, uh, this is only my opinion, but even with the Magdalene laundries, um, that want of hiding the truth, um, not wanting to see it, put it away, just, you know, we won't talk about it, you know, and it's the same with the, a lot of reports, you know, even there recently when the, the with p survivors of the Magdalene Laundries wanting to find out more information and stuff, it's really, really hard to try to get the government to hear. And I think once a government sees something that is a troublesome uh, subject, they try to brush it under the carpet as much as they can. And it's the same with, like, even, for example, homelessness. I work with homeless groups in the Dublin city. And I'll stop and I'll sit with a homeless person. I'll beg with them. I'll say, how much did you get? Did you get much? I'll help you. Do you know, I'll never turn. I would never treat somebody on, that's sitting on the ground begging to any way different to somebody walking as a CEO in this country or any country or anywhere I meet. We're all human. We all live, breathe, eat, sleep. We'll all have to die. Do you know, but that poverty is really, really seen within the Irish society, not only for travellers, but with lower income families, and it's heartbreaking to see. Does the audience wish to contribute <laughs> at this stage? Uh, somebody wants to put up a, a hand. Uh, I, I just want to say something about traveller women. About what? And traveller women okay, right. and culture. One of the most positive aspects that's happened over my lifetime is the empowerment of traveler women. And I really, 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 the O'Reilly sisters from Tipperary last year who broke the silence about what was done to them as children and how the state services ignored them it was an indictment of what not of a country we live in, but that said, traveler women more and more of us young girls are not putting up with any sort of misogyny or bad behaviour from men. Also, the current generation of younger traveller men don't want to do what their daddies might have done. They don't want to do in the old ways. They want a, an equal relationship with women, be that their wives, partners, sisters, or female cousins. And I think that that's a credit to the involvement of drama women and drop your culture that women have always had strategies around protecting our daughters 
I think now it's phenomenal. When you agree, you can, you can see the shift and you can see, you the can see it. Yeah. I think that want of change as well, you know. I think um, sometimes traveller women a lot of the time get left in the background. Um, when in reality, I think that they're the backbone of, of, of the family, probably like matriarchs of, of, yeah. Yeah, um, of most, of most um, families, I suppose, the, the mother or the woman in the family is, is really the backbone. But I think sometimes um, traveller women get forgot about. Um, and a lot of the time, I suppose, the male is seen as the head of the family. And whilst that might be true, I think that the, the, the women in the house is, is most definitely the backbone and they hold everything together. Um, and I think that traveller women have have a very strong sense of resilience um, and bounce back from situations that other people mightn't bounce back as quick from. Um, because I suppose of the years of discrimination and racism and they know that they have a family there to rear, they have people to look after and they, they have no choice, they, they have to go up and do it. But I do think that sometimes that we are left in the background and people forget just how important that, that traveller women actually are. And even I suppose in the fight for um, equality in traveller women it's 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 women that's leading the way in that and um, there's lots of men there too we just need to get them talking and um, but uh, I, I do think that it's it's traveller women that's leading the way in that anybody want to contribute um there was an incident recently in tomb of feuding at a, at a graveyard and i heard lots of comments about this in the radio and i i I wonder if I, somebody didn't say, well, there was a feuding up the road in Northern Ireland for 20 <laughs> years, and 3,500 people were killed. And, <laughs> and uh, um, uh, again, this is an instance of how travel behavior is, uh, is given a, 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 an edge, which the behavior of other people uh, is, is, is I don't there. think. Helena, Mary, or myself are here to justify that kind of behavior. And feuding is wrong. There needs to be more resources, intermediation. But you know what feuding does? Really and truly, it damages children, and that's the bottom line. It doesn't. Uh, uh, it can, uh, and again, uh, women are, are lost in all that stuff, but really it's the women and children that suffer. A qualified traveller, uh, well, as a qualified mediator who mm. just happens to be a traveller, um, I go into prisons and I teach peer mediation within the prisons and what? peer mediation within the prisons. And I sat within families that are feuding. And although I don't, you know, condone it and I don't challenge it, or I don't want to, you know, them to be challenging all the time. I do hear their cries of, you know, even the inequality within our own community against each other can ca is causing this, you know, or uh, like, you know, a bad word being said or, you know, and uh, the slightest little thing can kick something off that has been spanning 20, 30 years. There is been changes and there has been changes and even within our own community, we're trying to educate um, the younger generation not to do this, but when you are standing there and you are not like condoning this whatsoever but if you are standing there and you see your father getting hit you're going to stand in and you're going to make you're going to stop that you're going to help you're going to to know you're going to protect that man if you see your mother get if you see your sister going to get hit and i'm not condoning violence but you're also not going to allow someone within your family to be to you know and i with the recent um feud that was going on up in galway and there's also recent feuds in dublin we had somebody fly in last night from a different country that has been involved in a feud for a long, long time. Do you know, that's the settled community. So 
it's glamorized by the media as being this big wrong bad thing which it is but there's too much emphasis put on it um, it sells papers it sells you know um, stories but in all honesty why not you know implement services that can stop and have a stop this from happening but also go in and integrate within them within our community and understand the reason why it's happening in the first place uh, to be able to ask well listen can we help there's n it's not it's just look at them you know and that's that's what a lot of time again something's going to sell a, a newspaper it's going to be written you know it is the media and it's how the media portray travellers like if there's if there's a, uh, a wedding going on in the settled community or a funeral going on in the settled community, it, it, it's not said a, a settled wedding or a, a settled um, funeral, but if it's a traveller wedding or a traveller funeral, automatically it's put out there, the, the label of traveller is put out there. Realistically, it doesn't matter. Somebody is getting married or somebody is, is after dying and getting buried. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter whether they're a traveller or not. That's just another label that's after being put on them. And, and I think that the, the conflict probably contributes a lot to maybe suicide rates and stuff as well because there's um the young people feel a lot of pressure um, and i suppose young people coming up it's it's well if they carry the the, the fighting names i suppose within the community and um, and if uh, a lot they're expected there's a, there's an expectance there of well my father fought or my grandfather fought and unfortunately it gets to the stage then that there's that there's young children that don't even realise what they don't talk to the, these people for or what the argument is about because it's after happening generations beforehand. It's like the troubles in the north. Yeah. There's now a generation of young people that wasn't even born around 1998 when the Good Friday Agreement happened. Um, they weren't even born in the troubles, but yet they're continuing on the same violence. Do you know? And why is that? Because it's expected. You get out there, you do that, show, uh, show, show them, show them, show them. And that, once it's drilled into you as a person, you, sometimes it's the shame of looking like a coward, looking like looking, you're walking away, you know, and then you're stigmatised within your own family for not protecting your own. Oh, so sorry. In the following day, children from those families weren't able to go to school. Families weren't able to get served in the supermarkets. So there's a whole knock-on effect. Before, just the year before the COVID um, kind of kicked in here uh, across the world. And they were going around um, doing um, a trolley collection and the call out was, do you remember the ice bucket challenge? Well, this was the trolley challenge. And you go out and you fill a trolley, you donate it to your local super on your local um, uh, children's uh, uh, you know, charity or whoever. Do you know the amount of stick and abuse they were getting off security guards and shops and, and you're robbing this, you're robbing that. And you could see these clearly, these people were on video the whole time because they were like, lads, I'm going around now. Look, I'm after filling the trolley. It's your turn, it's your turn. This was all documented, videotaped. But yet when they got to the doors, they were being accused of robbing, accused of, you know, there was one uh, Catholic, um, uh, group within England that there was a group of traveller men I can't remember the name of it if you hear look at what it is apologies but they went around and they filled the van with 10,000 euro worth of toys from Smiths they were surrounded by guards at the, at that, in that car park because their van was full of toys the receipt your man had the receipt the receipt was hitting the ground he was like you know I paid for this but it, it, it's that expected that you go or that that kind of like you know outlook of we expect you to rob so we're going to blame you you know we expect you to this so we're going to blame you we expect you to this so we're just going to blame you anyway you can't do good for doing wrong sometimes you know and i'm not blaming it all on uh, like the wider community because again even within our own we are call, causing internalized and shame and stigma you know i'm getting signals that that's enough now we have to stop
Um, and thank you very much. And I invite the audience to. And also Helena. This is Helena's town. So thank you, Helena. Okay, thank you. So I suppose uh, 50 words. Um, I'll keep it quick. I suppose you all probably want to head off soon enough. Uh, so first of all, I'd just like to say thanks to everybody for coming this evening. Um, I know it's not easy to get time off from everyone's busy schedules, so, um, and especially after work hours. So fair play to all those that made the effort to be here. Um, Traveller Pride is a national event that's held once a year, and this year National Traveller Pride was held from the 20th of September to the 27th, and local Traveller Pride began on the 27th and runs through until the 3rd of October. So this year um, in Kilkenny, the steering group of Traveller Pride decided that we wanted the events we were holding to be a little bit more visible to the wider society. Um, and after a couple of, of minor setbacks, uh, we were lucky enough to be able to collaborate with two amazing cultural venues here in Kilkenny, Butler Gallery and, and St. Canice's Cathedral. So I suppose from the very start of this process, um, we felt, felt so welcomed by both places. Um, I think that the fact that there was a genuine excitement from people to attend the events around Traveller Pride, and in particular this event tonight, um, speaks volumes for the levels of integration that's now been reached in Kilkenny. Um, and also for people's openness to learn more about traveller culture. Uh, I suppose from a traveller's perspective, it was a nice feeling to be able to turn the tables, if, if only for a short time, and that we were the ones that were in charge, and be able to say who we wanted at the event. Um, and I, I must admit, it felt good to be in a position to be able to tell people, no, sorry, we're taking charge here for ourselves. Um, so I suppose just to the two girls who, who performed here this evening, we're going to hear Caitlin in a few minutes, I'd just like to say well done to you both. Uh, Leona and Caitlin are tremendously talented and it's a pleasure to see them both performing here this evening. Uh, I don't want to start thanking people because I'll, I'll definitely leave somebody out, but um, on behalf of the community and myself personally, uh, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to everyone who has helped make this event and Traveller Pride Week possible in Kilkenny. Um, hopefully you all enjoyed both tonight and all of the week's events. Uh, we have our social event in O'Loughlin uh, Court even tomorrow, uh, starting from 12 until 4 and we'd love to see you all there. Uh, I won't hold you on much longer, but again, thanks to everyone for coming and a, a safe journey home to you all. of our government.